Numbers 11, I want to preach for a few moments today when all you have is what you have. Turn around and tell about three people. When all you have is what you have. Praise God. Thankful for what I have. Woo! Said I'm thankful for what I have. Let's go to chapter number 11, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers. Chapter number 11, verse 1, and when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. I have found a passage that lets us know almost immediately what complaining does. It displeases the Lord. This is a good start to the message. <laughs> I'm glad I've got some amens in the house. Though they, they be a little scarce, Sister D, I'm glad I got me some amens. Can I get an amen corner today? Amen. Praise God. And the Lord heard it. He heard the people complaining. And his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Woo, Jesus. And the people cried unto Moses. And when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. He called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Verse number four to nine is what I'm preaching. And the mixed multitude that was, the mon that was among them fell a lusting and the children of Israel also wept again and said who shall give us flesh to eat here they go again now we don't know exactly what that first complaint was about but here we go with another one the fire of the Lord had already fallen outside the camp people had already been slain and you have an opportunity to fix this and here you go again Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So the children of Israel wept again. They said, who will give us flesh to eat? They started crying again. Because here's what they said. We remember the fish, which we did eat in Egypt freely. Really? <laughs> really? Come on. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all beside this manna. Can you imagine that? Before our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed. The color thereof is the color of bedellium. And the people went about and gathered it, ground it in meals, beat it into mortar, baked it in pans, made cakes. And the taste was as the taste of fresh oil. <laughs> thought I was going to leave you and wear you out today on complaining. It, it, it's going to turn the corner. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Praise God. Father, we love you and we bless you. And we thank you, God, for this incredible opportunity to come into this house and to give you praise and glory and honor. Father God, we anticipate your coming, the rapture, the catching away. We thank you for it. We give you praise for it, God. We thank you that at any moment, Lord, in the moment of a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. Father, I thank you that we have that precious promise. Thank you, God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us, but go with us even unto the ends of the world. Father, bless your people right now. Comfort, strengthen them. All those that could not be here, but technologically they join us on the other end, we say. I pray that, God, they will have the same experience that cannot be explained. We just know it's you. So, Father, move and do great and mighty, mighty exploits in the name of Jesus. And let the saints of God say amen and amen. Let's clap our hands and thank God for his goodness over our lives. This is going to be fun to preach today to the extent that it's always fun to preach. It's always an enjoyable time. I have kind of focused in my life on whatever God has you doing, have fun doing it. 
even when you go through spiritual warfare at times, even when you go through difficulty at times, you have to understand that in life, you will have hardships. You'll have turbulence. You'll have trials. You'll have some tribulation. Things are just going to happen as things happen. But saints of God, I have come to be determined in my mind that whenever, however, and wherever there is a time that I have learned as we find in the scripture that in whatsoever state I am in, therewith to be content. There's something about contentment that forces you from a disciplinary standpoint to dedicate your heart, your mind, your work, and wherever God has you at a specific time and season, I'm going to be content. Because the Bible says this, and I love the finality of this, that godliness with contentment is great gain. If you just learn to mix a little prayer in your circumstance, if you learn to mix a little praise in the atmosphere, if you learn to worship and be thankful for the good things that God has done for you, atmospheres begin to shift as you do that. But the momentum killer is this. It's when people begin to complain. You know, I noticed as I get a little older, you, you pay more attention to details. You pay more attention to the small things in life that you took for granted 54 years. I've noticed in my mind when my mind has to really work and think about something and I'm in a spot where I am forced to be creative and articulate, I, I feel the grind in my mind. I feel almost like a computer when you push it. The fan starts running or you can hear it inside crunching. It's like my mind, the more things happen and I get in a circumstance where I gotta fight my way out by faith and say, God, I'm fighting the good fight of faith, but I need you to help me. Help me be creative right now. Help me to be articulate of right, or, or, help me to be articulate right now so that God, when we get this thing finished and resolved, you will get all the glory for it and we will be happy with what you have given us. But I'm also learning at the same time, when I hear people complain, it almost does the same thing to my brain again because I am a shepherd. And when I hear complaints coming in, I'm trying to fix stuff. And, and I'm learning as I get a little bit older, you just stay in your lane. You just stay right there. I was on an airplane not long ago and the stewardess came through there and she was a little petite thing, bless her heart. And there was a door that wouldn't shut. It was a bin that got hung up. And all of a sudden this man, he got up and he took stab at it. And he was just one of them on the plane. And it didn't work for him. And I'm sitting there thinking, Todd, you need to do something. Jump in and fix that door. I started talking back to myself. I don't know if it's a 54-year-old thing or what, but I'm answering myself now. I started talking back to myself. Yeah, and if you don't fix it, you're going to be embarrassed like the last two. Just stay in your seat. Hallelujah. There's some things in my life I just said I ain't going to fix it. There's some things I'm just going to sit there and let them try to work it out. And as I get older, I find out that people that complain had a complaint yesterday. And the day before that, they had another complaint. And that's all they've learned to do in life is just complain about everything and never get up to do anything. I dare you to tell your neighbor complaints are over. We are getting ready to get in the place where we have positioned ourselves for blessing and help and prosperity and healing and joy and a little bit of peace sprinkled in there as well. I just want to tell you in short really quick that complaints are statements that say I don't believe my circumstance will ever change. Complaint Complaints are statements that say, I don't trust God. Complaints are statements that say, this is never going to get any better. That's all complaining does. All you are doing is adding to the mountain of discouragement that's already weighing in your yard and weighing on your mind. As big as you build this mountain over here, you're building it on top of your head as well. When are you gonna come up from underneath that and just quit complaining about stuff you can't fix? 
It's one thing for me to ask someone to turn the heat down. It's one thing for me to ask for something that will help a particular circumstance. But when it gets to the place where you constantly complain about something you should give to God and just let him have it, like it is in Numbers chapter 11 here, then it's to the place in your life where the enemy's got a hold of you because these words can drag down the momentum that God has. The last thing in the world I need to hear here, when we're in ministry is a complaint about what not it, what's not going right Woo! God help me put my words together so that I can convey I can't stand to be around a complainer sounds like I'm complaining right now doesn't it I'm complaining about the complainers God help us help us to get to the place where but you got to understand it'd be one thing if I was just up here complaining but I'm complaining about the complainers that need to quit complaining and stop belly aching about everything that's not going right and get up to do something to change it my God I feel what I'm preaching now Something just got pushed in the atmosphere. When you're positioned ministerially in this church, don't complain. Don't complain about it. Man, just keep doing what God calls you to do. Keep on doing it. If you're faithful with the three or four, God will give you more. But how in the world is he going to add six more for you to complain to them with the three you already have? You already tore down and knocked them down because, well, this just isn't working out today. This just isn't what I expected. You know how many times we've had musical groups come to this church and promise me they'll be here at 3 and they show up at 6 p.m.? Do you know how many times they said we're going to stay and eat? You make food and they can't stay and eat? Do you know how many times they said we thought we were going to but we can't now? It does me no good to complain about it. Jill! I'm mad. They're not coming to our house now. They're not staying to eat with us. Forget it. You gotta suck it up and go on. You gotta say forget about it. My God will pass the food out to everybody else. Now we've got a clean house and we did it on purpose and they're not coming over. It's okay. We got beds and linens washed and made and thank the Lord we don't have to do that now. Find something to be positive about. Find the good in every complaint you have and turn that wreck around and say God's in the details somewhere. God's working it out for my good and my blessing. Do you not understand that by now Romans 8, 28 has kicked in in your life that all things work together for good to them that love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose purpose. I used to get so mad about this man my mom married. Man, he gave us fits. He was abusive. Sometimes he tried to be physical. Woo. Sometimes he mostly was verbal. And I'm telling you, one day I walk in and say, well, hello. Thank you, Lord. I didn't call his name. <laughs> I'd say, hello. He'd look and growl at me. I'd go into my room. I'd say, what in the world's wrong with that man? I'd go in my room. And I look across the hallway, my sister's door's taken off because one day she slammed it. Now, you know a little 14-year-old girl needs a door. Come on, everybody. I just go in there and say, sister, I'll watch out for you when you need to do what you need to do and change your clothes. I said, this is ridiculous. Amen. I got into my life and I started thinking about, oh, woe is me. Man, the, the enemy loves when you start that woe is me business because you start opening up your mouth and the enemy lives off the words you speak. Ask a snake how he does it. Sticks his tongue out and fills the atmosphere to see where you are. And you become vulnerable when you get the victim mentality. So what did I do in a room full of manure? Instead of complaining about the smell, instead of complaining about everywhere I walk, I've got manure coming through my toes, I started looking for a horse in there. I said, with all this manure, there's got to be a horse. And when I find him, I'm going to get him. I'm going to wash my feet and jump up on his back and ride up out of here. you got to find something in life that says, this is why this happened. Do you know if my mom would have never married that man, I never would have went to Brookfield High School where I met Jill Miller and I said, oh my Lord, look at her legs because she ran track and she still holds records. Pardon me, guys. I don't mean to be so discreet on how I define what I saw. 
I just said, how beautiful is this girl? My goodness, look at her. I could never get her. She's a great above me, won't even talk to me, don't even know I exist. But give me 40 pounds later, hallelujah, and a little comb over hairdo, and she saw something in me somebody else apparently didn't see. If my mom would have never married that man that treated us so bad, I'd have never mo moved to Brookfield and met Jill. Would you please find something in the mess of your life, in the grand scheme of things that says no matter, you had to go through hell and high water, look where I brought you from. Man, I'm telling you, I feel like running right now and it's Sunday morning. I mean to tell you, I feel like putting on my gym shoes and taking a lap around the building. Woo. Any of you young people just feel that run? Am I the only one? Any of you young people feel that? You did, Chase? Good. C can you take a lap for me? That'd make me feel good. <laughs> Any adults feel what I just felt? Come on, Brother Scott. Take a run for me, brother. Oh, well, there's, there goes Sister Sherry. Look, get out of her way. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'd join her too. If there's anybody in here that can find some good and the bad, if there's anybody in here that can say, look what the Lord already done and did, would you please stand up and give God a shout? Woo! <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Sorry, but I'm not sorry. That running is an expression of how we feel. Praise God. They don't run, man. They're walking around like, whoa! <laughs> Hallelujah. Try it at home. Amen. You need a practice run? Go for it. Hallelujah. When you complain, it is displeasing to the Lord. Stop complaining about everything. Oh, it's so hot outside. And you thank God. It's going to change something right in the middle of a season just because he's got one belly acre. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't even know where belly acre came from. That's not even in my notes. It's like the power just slipped right in and said, tell them belly acre. I said, belly acre. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> We're all still smiling. Praise God. Keep smiling. Keep shining. <laughs> Come on, saints. Does no good. There are some things that are set and you can forget it because God has set it and just forget it. There's some things that are not going to change. You are the one that's going to have to acclimate to the turbulence that will show up periodically in your life. And the only way you're e ever going to find a level of success is being able to acclimate, flow with it, run with it, go with it, shift with it. Say, there's nothing about this I can change. Sit there until he gets you through it. There's so many people like to gang up with everybody and start complaining about something and then you start dragging everybody else in. Oh, I think the pastor's talking to me. You better believe I am. So don't call the office and ask them if I was talking about you. I am. I am. And I'm going to tell them when they answer, tell them I was. I did, I have, and I will continue to. Amen. You came here for me to talk to you. Amen. I'm praying you were hoping I would be here to preach to you. This is what I'm doing. Hello. Well, I didn't know you were going to hurt my feelings. I'm not hurting your feelings. I'm trying to get you to get over yourself and just know that you can get through this, that there's something good that God is doing in spite of the mess I'm sitting in. Woo! My God, help me, Jesus, because I got Jesus on the main line. Come on, tell your neighbor, tell him what you want. Oh, Lord, I got to hurry. The Bible say that the Lord heard this complaining and was displeased. I just have to ask you the question. What does God hear you saying? 
This complaining is what displeases the Lord. It does no good to complain about some things. Don't say it. Don't drag the team down. Don't drag the church down. Stop it. I'm hot. I'm hot too. Let's get a club, hotters. <laughs> hey, we're all hot. Come join the hotters over here. What's hotters? People that are hot can't change it. Come join us. We'll stand around and blow on our top lip, wipe our foreheads and say, we're hot. Stop it. Get you a club of praisers. Hey, I feel good. How do you feel good? Well, that's hot. But I started thinking about the goodness of the Lord. And I could have been in hell and in the grave. And I'm glad I'm not there. I could have been in a fiery furnace. And I'm glad I'm not there. God is good. And you got to come over and help me praise him. God, he, yay. Somebody over there like, whoo. I'll say, yeah, I'll take this key. You take that one. God hears what is said. Don't worry about the people you're talking to. Be concerned that God hears what you say. Stop walking away like, ooh, I'm, I'm, I hope I didn't say the wrong thing. You better ask God. That's the one we need to be pleasing. It's in conversations when I leave places that the Lord is having with me that I didn't carry myself right. Did I say the right thing? Did I treat people right? Did I show them love? Did I find someone to encourage? Did I jump in there and help someone? Or did I sit there and watch the struggle? Because the struggle is real. Praise God, everybody. It displeases the Lord when we complain. I want what he hears out of this vessel to be pleasing unto him. I want him to say glory to God. A lot of people say they're so positive. They're so biblical. I don't know why those Christians are so positive. We're actually not. We're just very biblical. And when you become very biblical, you become very positive by default. Come on. Come on. Hey, saints, this is not making any noise. Don't y'all sit back there like, I'm going to agree with him. I ain't saying amen. If you're going to do that, you might as well just go, yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Help me out. Woo. The Bible does not say let everything that have breath. My God, I'm throwing off my equilibrium just doing that. The Bible say let everything that have breath. Let's give him a praise right now. Come on, all the complainers, everybody in the house, just stand up and go to praising God, saying, Lord, thank you. Woo! Not God, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to start telling you. I'm going to start telling you, we're turning over a new leaf today. I'm, I'm going to start telling you. You start bringing complaints to me, I'm just going to say, could you have fixed that? Yeah. No, not really. Then what was the use in saying that? My God, come on, church. <laughs> Carissa walked up to me a few months ago. We, we, we put her in there, and Sister Tammy had a vision for it, and we're so grateful for how everything that has happened, and we're praying for little precious sister Tammy going through that never complains, never complains, still drops off cookies, trying to encourage people, man, isn't God good? Little sister Krista took over, and she come in one day, she said, help me, brother pastor. I said, what's going on? She said, it's chaos, Lord Jesus. I said, no, it's not chaos. I said, ministry is controlled chaos. Yeah. 
I told her, I said, Carissa, you don't know how many times at 54 I walk in and it is chaotic, but I know God's in control. I walk in and I'm, and I mean, listen, Carissa, please know I am not throwing you under the bus. It was how you approached it was great because it was like, I don't understand this and I just need you to throw some oil in here because we need to get through this shift. I said, are we going to get through it? I said, Carissa, it's controlled chaos. I said, especially with children. You don't know what requests they're going to give. You, you, don't, you, you just don't know. They're going to throw their hands up and say, hey, pray Superman shows up at Lowe's Ames. <laughs> Lowe's Theater. <laughs> you don't know what they're going to say. And that's a good request. Because when I was little and 12 years old, they took prayer requests at the church. And I didn't give a complaint. I gave a prayer request. And that old dude my mom was wanting to marry was sitting two people down. I threw my hand up. Ask brother and sister Gibbons if it's not the truth. Brother Livingston said, Brother Todd, I raised my hand up for something similar to that. I raised my hand up. I said, would you all pray that my mom will get back with my dad? <laughs> I never even looked at him either. I just said, will you please pray that my mom will go back to my dad, him sitting two people down. Boy, I bet he shrunk down in there. <laughs> Can't get no help today. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't go back to that. You keep on praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It displeases God when we get to that complaining mode in our life. Amen. Then they directed their complaint. Here's the shift in the service. They directed their complaints to the right department. And instead of complaining to one another, let me tell you something, saints of God. I don't mind if you suggest. I don't mind if you have you considered. I don't mind if things come in. I, I assure you, I assure you, I'm, I'm not like that. I'm not like, I don't get sensitive. Don't tear down what we're doing. <laughs> don't, don't you tear down what we're doing that brought us here. Thank you, Lord. But, but don't come up speaking in subliminal messages either. Just come on and say what you got to say. Hallelujah. I got big shoulders. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And if I feel the investment by the Spirit that you're invested in me and not just wanting to get your way, I just wonder if we could do something for me. No. No. I'm not like that. I want to help people. And there's just problems and battles and difficulties I've had that sometimes I just had to go to my pastor or I had to go to someone in confidence, not people around me to form a club, but to go to the right people and say something out of love, Moses, man, you can't get any more humble then. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? Moses, pray. Something's happening. Now, let me tell you something, saints of God. A, a potential complaint is potential growth. <clears throat> Trying to figure out which way I'm going to walk. Let me say this again. A potential complaint is potential growth. But how that you endeavor to go through the processes of breaking down how I'm going to convey this, how am I going to communicate this, and how am I going to get through this, not around it. I'm going through this. God doesn't bring little Davids to go around giants. He brings them to slay them. Hey, guys, what's going on? Well, we got this Philistine uncircumcised for 40 days in this valley that's been taunting us. Ah, the complaint. David says, what am I going to do? I'll be right back. Here's some parched corn. Here's some cheese. Here's some bread. Let, let me run down to the brook. Wow. And you got to know where your help comes from. You got to know where your rocks are. Man, can I preach that just a minute? 
you, you got to know where your rocks are. You got to know where your help comes from. You got to know where your backup is. You got to know that if you ever get in trouble, where's my brook? Where's the thing I run to that's going to give me support for the sling I got in my pocket? So they said, we've got to pray. And you've got to pray because I find in my life that when I start complaining about things internally or I start saying things I should not put on my wife or I say things that I take to the wrong people, I, I've learned in my life i got to be really careful because normally when people have that good of a complaint, it's because there needs to be a shift in your life. God is trying to get you to the next level. And you can sit here and complain about it or you can understand that, wow, God is up to something. I have went through and seen our staff grow. I have seen our redeem team grow, but it has not come through. Pastor, we need help here. People aren't complaining. They're saying pray about this because we are outgrowing things. So normally when it's easier to complain about it, this, 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 it's easier to go, God help me because this complaint is growth is right around the corner. Come on, Jesus, and help me. A little baby does not know how to communicate other than if it's wet or messy, cry, and somebody will change you. Do you know what you're really saying in life when you complain? I'm messy. I got something I can't fix myself, and I need someone to change me. My God, am I preaching to anybody yet today? You are 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 and we have 80 year olds in here that still need change because you come up on something. I can't fix it, mama. Take this thing off of me and change me. That's what you're really saying. I'm complaining. I can't get out of this. What you're really saying is you need to change. You need to get up over that thing. You need to walk up on that mountain. You need to go through it, not around it. You don't need to go over it. You don't need to go under it. You need to confront this thing and say, today is the day I'm about to change. Here's, here's some good Bible. First John, y'all, I can't leave you like this. I got to finish this up. Y'all ready? Just sit a little bit longer in that wet mess. We're going to get you out here in a minute. We're going to change in just a second. Somebody else is like, whoo. Hang on. I walked up to my grandbaby the other day. I went to kiss her on the forehead, and I went, ooh, Wow. Chelsea smiled and said, she's still going. <laughs> I started to walk away in that blessed little thing. She went, mm -mm. and Chelsea goes, see, she's still going. <laughs> Sometimes you got to wait till you get it all out. So far, she grunts and smiles through the whole process. But when she's done and it's nasty, she's starting to cry. Oh, come on, saints. Come on, come on. Am I preaching all right to anybody? 1 John 3.22, whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Already I know that whatever we ask, we're going to receive because we keep in his commandments and we do the things that are pleasing in his sight. What else do you have to say, brother preacher? Hebrews eleven six. 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. Do you know that complaining eliminates faith in your life? Because you put no faith in God to change your current circumstance that needs changed. Yeah. Hallelujah. We must use extreme caution when getting around the mixed multitude because they're mixed up people. Yes, sir. Praise God. Yes, sir. 
In other words, there's people that have come into your territory that are not for you. <laughs> but, some, but, but, but sometimes semi against you. Okay? You have to be cautious of the mixed multitude. I don't mind being around them. Just don't indoctrinate me with your mess of mixture. I don't even mind you standing next to me. I don't even mind if you're sitting on a plane next to me. Don't try to indoctrinate me with a mixed doctrine. Praise God. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. That's the problem with mixture. Whenever you get mixture with anything, it's tainted. Unless it's meant to be there. Then it's a good mixture. Like brown sugar and flour and chocolate chips. Does flour go in there? What else goes in there? Eggs. Man, I heard that one right away. Eggs. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> what else goes in there? Bacon powder. Salt. Sugar. Oh, Brother Bill says sugar. <laughs> Brown sugar. What else? Butter. Oh, my favorite on bread. Hallelujah. We said salt. James said real butter. He's looking down when he said it too. I called him real butter. <laughs> By itself, none of it would be any good. But see, when God gets in something and puts the right mixture, and you put it through the fire, oh, Jesus, it's coming out. Here's the problem, saints, and here's what else pushes complaints, and then I'm, I believe I'm finished with this segment, but I'm not making any promises. Here's the other problem. The other problem is, is that oftentimes we reflect back and remember now and again, not often and not near as often now that I've gotten a little older. But the enemy used to always try to talk to me about, remember when? Re remember when you, and boy, you were waiting on that one, weren't you? And the enemy will come in there and he will try to get you to remember stuff and say, ooh, you had it good then. You had it good. And do you know this is the same thing God's people did? They started saying, we remember the onions, the garlics, the leeks. They started saying, we remember what we had freely. Really? Really? Okay, uh, let me back up and just have a conversation with you. Because if you remember correctly, you were in Egypt. Come on. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Oh, the food was free. But you had no house, no land, and you were in bondage to Pharaoh. But the food was free. The devil is a liar. Don't come up in church talking about what a great time you had out there when you were in bondage. Don't come up in the house of God and talk about what, how wonderful it was, but you were in bondage. You had no freedom when you woke up in the morning. You had no joy come Monday. You only had it on Friday. Do you remember where you were? You were not. It was not. It could not have been free. Then the Bible says, then the Bible says they looked around when they had nothing because they really truly didn't have free food. They were paying for it with their lives. They looked around. They said, we sure are missing that food. And all we have is this manna. This manna. They got creative. Man, God's talking to us right now, saints. Hold on, somebody. Hold on, somebody. I have the same thing as I had last Sunday. I've got his blood. 
I'm filled with the presence of the Lord. I've got his Holy Spirit on the inside of me, Brother Byron. I've got purpose. I've got peace. i got joy. Sometimes the enemy wants to throw us back into what was, what has been. And he wants us to reflect and think and meditate on what he says was a good time that you know was not a good time. It cost you how much for a 12-pack? And all it took was one drop of his blood that will last forever and ever. There was a woman at the well, and Jesus spoke to her and told her, I am the living water. You drink that, you're going to get thirsty again. You take one drink of this, you will never thirst again. Sometimes you have to look at what you have and be created with it. You got to be creative. Instead of complaining, you get to praying. Oh, oh Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I was getting ready for church this morning and I said, it's awful quiet in the house. Kingston, he's the grand dog. He was mad at me. He climbed clear up on the love seat, got himself a spot at the top of it, curled himself up and it's giving me the eyebrows down look. I said, what's wrong with you? He wouldn't even turn his head. He wouldn't even give me the side eyes. I was walking by him and his eyes weren't even following me. It was as if to say, I'm not eating my food. I'm not drinking. I don't need you to take me outside. Where's Carly? I finally looked at him. I said, mama ain't coming home for a couple days. It's just me and you. So get over yourself. Hallelujah. That house was so quiet. I started saying, hallelujah. I thank you Jesus I said thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord now and again you've got to get created with what you have because it's all you have sometimes you got to look around and know come tonight there's going to be fresh manna on the ground but what I have with what I have right now I'm going to mix it up I'm going to pound it into cakes I'm going to make bread I'm going to make muffins out of it I'm going to make the best of what I have because it's all I have and all I have is all I need because this will sustain me now and what's coming later will sustain me then. My God, I wish a shout would erupt in redemption. You better tell your neighbor all I have is what I have. Woo! Jason, my tank was running a little low. My tank got a little low. Woo, can I come down here and preach? Hallelujah. Praise God. I'll, I'll preach in the back if y'all want me to. My tank got to running low. Somebody said, I heard you got another church. I said, the Lord sure blessed us. What do you do in that church? I took what I had, because it's all I had. Took what I had. Sitting there talking. Chelsea comes in. Brother Nick called the other day. You know what happened in that meeting on Tuesday night? Manna. Stuff over last week just sitting around. She took that up, picked it up off the ground, started hitting it, pounding it, spreading that stuff out, brought fresh manna over what we had last week. Did God do anything for anybody this week? So, so you're saying Tuesday you got manna and you took the manna and you ate it and God blessed you with it. But there come a time when you had a little bit from what you had this morning that was there and you know more is coming this evening. So here I am complaining about, oh, look what I used to have. Would you please stop and look around at what you have right now and be a little creative with it and say, let me just find a story about the goodness of God. Let me find out how good he is. Let me find out how faithful he is. Let me find out how wonderful he is. Let me tell you how great he is. He is an awesome God. He is a mighty God. He is an incredible God. He put this manna on the ground this morning and there'll be more tonight. Woo! Charlie Lambert, might as well just call his name out. He called me last night. He called me this morning. FaceTime me. 
I pick the phone up. My hair's going 500 different directions. <laughs> not like it's not doing the same thing right now. I just went ahead and answered it. Hello. Good morning, sunshine. <laughs> I was all sunshine. I said, look at you looking all dapper with your fancy sweater shirt on. Well, I'm going to church. We started talking. He says things like this. I can't wait to come up and be with you. I said, Charlie, can't wait to see you. I can't wait to talk to your people. Why? Because we sit around and we hammer manna. Somebody takes a little bit and bakes it. Somebody else makes a brick out of it. Somebody else makes a cupcake. Somebody else just lets me taste a portion while they're beating the fire out of it. We take all of this that we had this morning and we throw it out on the table and we just, we feast on it. And I don't know what happens, but we, my God, help me preach right here, Lord. I know it's 12.02, but help me preach right here. What we do is we take what God's already given us. And when we put mine with yours and yours with mine, and mine's is yours and yours is mine's, and we get it all together, we start tasting what you've got and what i got. And all of a sudden, I don't know how it happened, but it all starts tasting like fresh oil. I mean to tell you, it goes down and it's like the oil from glory comes down in my life. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Sister Patty, oh, how I love to see the pictures of Claude Ely at your house. Brother Terry. I went. Love to talk to Brother Terry about the good old days. John Carter. Claude Ely. Oh, my good, the list is... Of names goes on and on. Finnis Jakes, that has a commentary Bible, that's incredible. And I sit down with Betty Jean years and years ago in my late 20s. What do you study out of, Brother Todd? I said, My Dakes Bible. She says, Oh, Brother Dakes. And all at once, her mind starts twirling oh thank you Lord I said sister Betty Jean did you know him oh brother Todd honey did I know him I sat at the table and ate with him I talked with him I said Betty Jean you knew him I was in conferences with him all over way back in the day oh here comes the manna here comes the manna Tell me about him. Oh, he's a good man. He memorized most of the New Testament with punctuation. He could sit down and just read it verbatim. Just boom. Just like that. Oh, we had manna. We did different things with it. But we were all blessed by it. Hallelujah. I love to hear those old stories about the pioneers of the faith. The pioneers of the faith. The pioneers of the faith. <laughs> people that you get to shake hands with. People that you get to meet. People in my teenage years, which would have been 30 some years ago. Y'all hear me? 30 plus years ago. That I shook hands with them. That I knew them. That I felt them wrap their arm around me and pet on me and love on me. That now today, I wish I could talk to him one more time. Come on, saints. This is why, saints of God, he has given us manna. I'm about to give you something that if you tried to warm that up in Egypt and break it down, it'd be a mess. But let me show you what I'm about to give you. Because I'm going to turn this thing because of your unity and collectiveness of the body of Christ. You're going to get together, and I'm going to feed you with manna that's going to taste like fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Saints of God, that's what those stories do. When we talk about them, it brings up fresh oil. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 
move in the service. Hallelujah. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, whisper it. Look at him and say, oh, the Lord's been so good to us. The Lord has been so good to us. Come on, go ahead and be truthful with somebody. Go ahead and tell them. I had a little bit of a struggle last week, but I'm not complaining. God has been good. I've had some hardships, but God has been good. Sometimes I think about things that have happened to me. Sometimes I think about things that have been done to me. Sometimes I think of how unfair it is that I don't always get to blast my side of the story everywhere. Not saying I was perfect through all of it, but y'all get the point. Amen. And you sit down and you can look over things that have happened and a little bit of frustration starts to develop. And I say, wait a minute, wait a minute. God, thank you for everything that's happened. God, thank you for every good gift, precious gift. Thank you, God, for everything. God, thank you for those that have walked in and those that have stayed. And God, those that have blessed and those that have helped. Come on, saints of God. You, you, you can't dwell on stuff you can't fix. It does you no good to complain it. Come on. We're not... I, I want to tell you, I want to prophesy right now, you are not stuck where you're at. You're not stuck in a marriage. You're not stuck in a house. I'm telling you, you can be creative with the manna that God has given. You can mix it all up together, and it will taste like fresh oil. Come on. Let's stand all over the church. You ought to tell at least five people, God has been good to me. God has been good. Come on. Come on, let, let's change it up in here. Let's change it up. Say it, say it. God has been good. God has been good. Now change it up a little bit and look at your neighbor and say, God has been good to me. Come on, God has been good to me. So I throw up my hands, praise you again and again, all with a hallelujah. I know it's not much. Fit for king with a heart singing. Everybody in the house, I'm I'm not telling you to practice worshiping. We're not going. We're not. That's you. But I can at least ask you to get with us. I can at least ask you to help me out as I'm trying to help you. Look at someone. Open up your mouth and say, God has been good to me. God has been good to me. Everything I went through, He ordered it. It was on my menu. God said, give it to him, give it to him, give it to him, give it to him. I trust him, I trust him. He's going to come through it. He's going to come out of it. I'm going to put him in the fire, but he's going to come out. I'm going to put him in the den of lions, but he's going to come out. I'm going to put a fever on him, but I'm going to break it down. I'm going to let them face lions and bears, but I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to let them face the giant, but I'm going to bring them through it. I'm going to give it to him, give it to him, but I am faithful, but I am faithful. How many is not saved? How many is not saved? Throw up your hand, say, Pastor, pray for me. I need Jesus. Come on, come on. Come on, quickly, quickly. Anybody that's not saved, I want you to raise your hand. Anyone, come on, dear sister. Come on, come on, I'll wait for you. Thank you, Lord, way in the back. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Are there others? 
Are there others? Stay with me, saints. Pray, pray, pray. Come on. Come on, pray. Are there others? Is there one more anywhere? Or two? Or four? Or six? How many? Come on. Come on. Come on. God is so good. How old are you, sister? Eleven years old. I want Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray with you. We're all going to pray with you. And I want you to pray this prayer with me, okay? Father, you pray that. Forgive me and wash me and come into my heart. Save me, Lord, by your precious blood. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And let the saints of God say amen. Oh, in God good. You know what? If that don't stir you up, you better reach in there and stir yourself. Praise God for souls being saved. Now, I mean, can raise your hand. Say, oh, brother preacher, I've been going through some stuff, but I know God's in this. And you know what? Everybody in here ought to have your hand raised up because you've been going through some stuff because right at the edge of that complaint is about a shift and a change that's about to happen. And you're going to graduate. Tell your neighbor, we're going to graduate. Everybody, don't, don't go anywhere just yet. I got one more little quick announcement at the end of church. But I want everybody that can to rush quickly but efficiently to this altar because I want to pray for you today in the altar. Come on. Come on, everybody. Everybody else, just stand by just for a moment. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. If you know God's about to bring you through some stuff, sometimes just a good prayer around the altar makes all the difference in the world. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. On your way up, tell some neighbors to your left and right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Throw up my hands and praise you again and 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 again. Father, I lift my hands by faith. I'm praying by faith. God, I know my limitations. There are quite a few. <laughs> but God, you have zero limitations. So Father, I pray for every Christian that feels a bit of desertion, feel they've been deserted. God, we take that out of here in Jesus' name. God, we are holding on to you. We are proclaiming your promises because we know you're able. So Father, begin to shift. Lord God, we want every season to shift around us, but the season's trying to tell you to shift. Lord, I put my coats away. My snowsuit is buried away somewhere. I don't need them heated gloves I got off of Amazon for $39.95. I don't need them winter socks anymore. I'm out of that season. So God, you are speaking to us. He wants, God wants you to shift. God wants you to acclimate. So Father, I thank you for what you're doing. I give you praise and glory. God, save our loved ones. Bring every one of them in and do great and mighty things in their hearts and lives. And Father, I will thank you. I will give you all the praise in the name above every name. And everybody said in Jesus' name, amen.